Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we're gonna be creating some sophisticated hand addressed envelopes. So what you see in front of you is the final outcome of this video. This is the first out of two parts um, next week we are going to be creating some whimsical or playful hand addressed envelopes so definitely make sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when that video comes out. So this week we're talking about sophisticated styles and by that I mean traditional or classy occasions that you would need a more formal look for. So as you can see we've got kind of three different styles or layouts uh, right here and I'm gonna walk you through each one of them and we're using some very basic materials for these so I'm leaving links to every single thing mentioned in this entire video just click on the link in the video description and all the links will be there for everything that's mentioned okay so whenever you're talking about a sophisticated traditional or classy style color plays a pretty big role in that so whenever you're lettering in the style you want to make sure that you're working with bold or rich color so as you can see i've got this rich navy color right here and i'm putting white on top of it so it's got this very bold effect and the white is accomplished with a white jelly roll gel pen so pretty simple and very easy to execute over here i'm just using a gold jelly roll gel pen and this is just a browned envelope and over here i'm using a water brush which i've got a bunch of videos on water brush lettering if you want some extra tips on that so i'll leave links to those and this is being accomplished just with some black pentel tube watercolor so all pretty basic and simple these colored envelopes came from envelopes.com uh, it's one of my favorite places to get envelopes because they have the peel and stick on the back of the envelope which is really awesome it makes it really easy to seal your envelopes when you're all done. And this recycled paper, I don't know if you can see it, but it's kind of speckled. Um, so this envelope came from Nina Paper, and I will leave links to those as well. Okay, so I'm gonna walk you through every single one of these layouts, and we're gonna do it together. So in an effort to save a little bit of time here, I typically would letter these out on a scrap sheet of paper before I went straight to the envelope, just to make sure I had everything figured out, the way my letters are working together, but since I've already done this um, in preparation for this video, this is kind of my practice round right here. So I'm gonna jump right into lettering the envelope, but just a heads up, I would definitely do a practice sheet before you jump right into using your envelopes. Okay, so as you'll notice, I've got some different layouts and different styles. We're gonna start with this gold one, and then we're gonna move to the blue one, and then we're gonna finish up with the watercolor. So as you can see, the difference in all of these is we've got a script right here, and this was accomplished using the non-traditional calligraphy method that I talked about a few weeks ago, and I'll leave a link to that video. Um, if you want any specifics on how to achieve this style, definitely check that video out. So this one is gonna be all script. This one's gonna be a mixture of script, uh, different white sans serif and then we're even adding in a little bit of doodles here and then obviously this one is script and then we've got a really nice kind of fine uh, uniform and weight sans serif okay so I'm gonna grab my brown envelope and I've got my gold jelly roll gel pen right here and this is just totally fake addressed uh, for this video. So I'm just gonna go in, and the point is, is we want a lot of attention drawn to the name first, so I always make the name a heavier weight than the rest of the address, so the person feels a little more special when they get it in the mail. So I'm just gonna letter out this person's name and then the rest of the address right below it. So this one's a pretty basic one, but it's a nice one to get started with. You really get your hand warmed up. And if you're not quite ready to mix different styles, this is a great go-to that'll still give you that classic look. Okay. And one thing you want to keep in mind is where the center of your envelope is so you can kind of offset where the name is going to go and then how the address is going to fall in between that. And the other thing that you want to make sure of is you give yourself a generous amount of space, especially on a smaller envelope. These envelopes are an A4 size, so a 4x6, envelope, or 4 by 6 card could go in here. And you just want to make sure that you've got enough room so none of your letters are going to run into your stamp when you, when you put your stamp on here. And I always like trying to squeeze my letters so there's a nice little, they look kind of connected like puzzle pieces, so it feels a lot more harmonious when I'm lettering. So I always try and, whenever there's an opportunity to kind of tuck things in into different places, I always take it. 
Okay, so while well, this is drying, because if I come back over here now, my hand's gonna hit this part and I don't wanna smudge any of the ink. So I'm gonna move on to the address below and then by that time I can come back up here and kind of um, make this a little heavier with weight. And right here, I always wanna make sure after I do my first line, I can see already that my positioning is a little too far left. So this gives me the opportunity, if I pause right here before I do my final line, to kind of scoot things over very slightly so then your eye kind of automatically adjusts and everything looks more centered than it's kind of flowing right now. So I wanna make sure my next line starts a little further left so when I finish it, everything will feel more centered. Okay, so now things are definitely feeling more centered to me, and I can just set my zip code right below it. And if you want, you can put dots between your numbers if you want to just add a little something extra. That's kind of classy looking. And now I'm just going to come in and increase the weight of the name, and then we're going to be all done with this layout. And when you're increasing the weight, a handy little trick is when you're drawing it out, just kind of pay attention whenever you have a downstroke. So whenever your pen was moving down, that's the stroke that you want to thicken. Okay, and one more tip when you're thickening your letters, you kind of want to pay very close attention to how thick your downstrokes are becoming because you wanna keep that thickness all the way through so all the letters end up with the same thickness. Sometimes I'll make the first letter of the first name and the last name a little thicker just so they kinda of stand out, but overall all of your extra letters, definitely make sure that you're keeping a uniform thickness on there so that it looks like a family and there's a lot more harmony overall. Okay, so this is the first layout, totally done, and we're gonna move on to the blue card now. And for the blue card, we're gonna be using our white Jelly Roll gel pen, and this is the final outcome, so we're just gonna replicate it. And I usually like um, putting a scrap sheet of paper right underneath whenever I've got lines that bleed off the edges, so that way I don't mess up whatever's underneath my envelope. So I kinda wanna have an idea of the center of the envelope, and then how I want it to come across, and I'm also taking care to remember where my stamp's gonna go. So this one's pretty close right here. I probably should have gone a little lower on this example, so I'm gonna try and do that here. And this is my center, so this is where I want the center of my name to go. Okay. And you can see I've got a little, a few bumps happening here. Definitely feel free to put your flap up um, if it'll help with the bumpiness that you're gonna feel when you go over your envelope. Okay, so I'm gonna come back just like I did in the other one um, to thicken this up, and I knew that my last name was gonna be a little offset here, so between the two of these, they'll feel more centered with the envelope as a whole. When you're drawing your sans serif um, type or your lettering, you just wanna make sure that you're keeping a consistent height, so kind of imagine lines that are drawn right here and you want to go as even with spacing as you can between your letters as well. Okay, so to show a little contrast, I decided to go with a more condensed, taller letter um, for the address than I did for the last name, just so they kind of stand out because I always want my name to be the forefront. So on a scale of hierarchy, I always want the name to come before the address. So that's the reason why this is script, this is going to be thicker, and this is going to be a thin, more condensed lettering. Okay, so we're going to finish this off by kind of tying the beginning of the address with the end of the address by bringing in a script to the city and the state, and then we'll finish off with the zip at the bottom. And I'm just going to check again how centered everything feels and it's feeling pretty good. Maybe I just need to come just slightly over a little bit. Okay, 
So to kind of finish this all off, I'm gonna introduce some doodles to the side and I like keeping a more pointy look whenever you're drawing laurels because if you have a curved laurel, it seems more playful or young. The pointier your leaves are on your laurel, it just kind of classes it up a little bit. Okay, so when I was drawing the initial stems for the laurels, just draw them like you're drawing parentheses and that'll make it a lot easier. It kind of takes a little bit of pressure off of you when you're drawing them. So I'm just gonna thicken up her first name and her last name and then this one will be done. Okay, there we go. This is our finished envelope for the second version. Actually, let me thicken up my little dot here. Okay. So on to the last one. For this last example, I'm using the black Pentel 2 but watercolor and I've got a little bit here on my palette. So I'm just gonna work with that. And I've got my small sized water brush right here. And then I've also got just kind of a, a scrap napkin that I use to kind of get any excess water off the tip. Okay. So we're gonna start by getting a lot of ink right on the tip of your water brush because we wanna letter a lot of letters in one fell swoop so we get that nice variation in opacity on the letters. So I've got a good amount on my tip right now. And once again, I'm gonna come off the edge so I've got the scrap sheet of paper underneath here still. And I'm just gonna go for it. So here's my stamp. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. I've got a nice variation going on, so it doesn't all look too rich. Um, so it feels that classy feel that we're going for. And we're just gonna carry that through using a sans serif with the rest of our address. Okay, so there's all of our lettering. We've got our simple gold total script. We've got a mixture of script sans serif with a little extra doodles. And then we've got a water brushed lettered address with script and sans serif. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every tuesday.com for a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and stay tuned for next week when we will be creating, I'll give you a little sneak peek. We've got this one, this one, and this one. So that's next week.